Production support for the weekly special is provided by IU School of Public Health Bloomington, addressing public health needs by preventing disease, promoting health, and improving quality of life across the state and around the world through research, teaching, and community engagement. Smithville Fiber, the Giga City Company, a philanthropic community partner since 1922, and a proud supporter of numerous community organizations. More information at smithville.com. The Alcobine Recognition Endowment Fund, established by friends and family of Alcobine to support jazz initiatives on WTIU and WFIU. And WTIU members, thank you. Tonight on a very special weekly special, take a look back on some of our favorite moments across the state. From unexpected destinations like Lafayette's Wolf Park, one of the country's top research centers on wolves, to extraordinary Hoosiers like internationally acclaimed artist and blacksmith Jack Brubaker. And of course, all the incredible moments in between, like skydiving with host Anne Shea and the talented musicians we've had in the studio, including tonight's guest, Gordon Bonham. Stay tuned tonight for our farewell episode. It's all coming up right now on the weekly special. Welcome to the Weekly Special, I'm Erica Sagone. For over 13 years, the Weekly Special has brought viewers like you to unexpected places and introduced you to unbelievable Hoosiers. And while the show will continue in spirit through WTIU's new program, Journey Indiana, this episode is actually our last Weekly Special. So we're taking a look back at some of our favorite moments along the way. We begin with one of the most surprising locations and some of the rarest residents the state has to offer. For over 40 years, Tippecanoe has had some very special residents, thanks to the vision of Purdue ethologist, Dr. Eric Klinghammer. After studying the animal behavior of doves, an encounter with a fellow ethologist's wolf changed his career. When she met him, he realized Yes, it looks like a dog, but she's definitely not a dog. She's something different. And he always remembered that. And that plus his interest in conservation and the need to find a new species to study all kind of came together after he had moved out here and was teaching at Purdue because he had land where he could keep animals like wolves. And so he knew George and Mary Rabb at the Brookfield Zoo. They'd been studying wolves and he got two wolf puppies from them and that was the start of Wolf Park. Established in 1972, the 75-acre facility provided the perfect environment for Klinghammer's research. Together, he and his fellow Wolf Park colleagues published the first Wolf Ethnogram, an encyclopedia of wolf behaviors, vocalizations, and pack dynamics observed for the first time thanks to his pioneering techniques of socialization for wildlife in captivity. He was familiar with this idea of hand raising socialized animals that will treat you like a social companion and so you can study them up close. We found that the only way we can compete with this inborn recognition of and preference for real adult canines as opposed to human foster parents is to take the puppies away from their mother when they're less than 21 days old and bottle raise them. So our wolves frequently get to go back and, and be with their mother again for visits. And then if we do our job properly, by the time they're four months old, they can go in with the adults to live, and yet they retain their, their strong attachments to humans. And this pays them and us back very much over the span of their lifetime. It takes a lot of the stress out of being forced into proximity with humans by being in captivity because it offers more opportunity for enrichment. We go in there and we do a little free training, sometimes behavior management training and training for medical husbandry while we're at it and social grooming. When we come in, they will often want to rally with us. A rally is a greeting ceremony that they do with each other and they will come around and they will want to muzzle greet it creates an environment where through things like operant conditioning, we can make them more comfortable with certain procedures and we can direct their behavior and, and channel it. 
Visitors to the park can get an up-close perspective with guided tours, wolf handling demonstrations, and even Howl Night, where audiences have an opportunity for a sing-along with the wolves. But these are not domestic animals. To ensure their safety, each handler must go through extensive training this conscientious approach has helped provide valuable ongoing data for field studies around the world. The research is important because the more you understand about wolves, the more you understand what their needs are and whether, say, if you wanted to introduce wolves into a certain environment, whether they could thrive there or whether they were going to have difficulties. He wanted to awake Americans to the necessity and wisdom of preserving their remaining wilderness. Wolves are a great ambassador animal to speak for their species and also they can sort of serve as a canary in the coal mine for how we're treating our, our wilderness and other large predators. One of the best examples has been the Yellowstone National Wolf Park Project, which reintroduced wolves 60 years after they were killed off by humans. In mere decades, the wolves have revitalized the Yellowstone ecosystem, everything from streams to songbirds. And Dr. Klinghammer was a direct inspiration. The leader of the Yellowstone Project, Douglas Smith, first studied wolves as a high school volunteer at Wolf Park. And it is great testament to the park's ongoing mission. For a lot of families, a trip to Yellowstone or someplace comparable might be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And he really wanted to make a place where uh, researchers could come and study animals. And he also wanted it to be a place where the public can come because he realized that if we don't let people form connections with wildlife and with wilderness, and some people can't get to the wilderness, but maybe if they know animals that they've seen at the zoo or at some place like Wolf Park, they'll think, you know, I would feel really badly. I think the earth would be diminished if we killed off all wolves or all humpbacked whales or all grizzly bears. This is one of these things where we're kind of throwing a rock into the water and we can't see from where we're standing how far the ripples will spread. I hope that we will keep children connected with nature and the wilderness and we hope that when they grow up and are old enough to vote that they will keep up on um, laws that are likely to affect how we treat our remaining wilderness areas and the animals that live in them and vote to preserve them. Wolf Park holds events including their amazing Howl Nights every week during the summer. For hours and directions visit their website wolfpark.org. Gosh, still one of my all-time favorite destinations in the state. Well, many Indiana treasures, like Wolf Park, are out in the open, but other gems can be hidden in plain sight. Like so many of the artists we featured on the weekly special, if you met blacksmith Jack Brubaker on the street, you'd probably have no idea his art has had worldwide impact. Blacksmithing is all about first having enough heat and then having enough force to shape it. It's a satisfaction having created something that, you know, to my eye is beautiful. I'm Jack Brubaker. I'm an artist blacksmith. Well, I've always been interested in the arts. I started selling ironwork within the first week that I've been hammering and thought, maybe this is where I'm supposed to be. I started like that in 1970. I've done nothing but blacksmithing ever since. I like that it's physical. I like that it's really work. Have the steel change form and become something in front of my eyes in relatively a few minutes. The idea of how you hammer out a piece, that it's just like working with clay or hot glass, that it's this soft material. It's just not as soft as those and takes a little more physical energy.
Blacksmithing is all about getting the steel hot enough that you can work it plastically, that is, massage it like you would a piece of clay. There's always a fire, and then we have to be able to massage that metal when it's hot. So that means having an anvil under it to withstand the hammer blow, and then a hammer to hit down on, on the metal on the anvil. And what's happening is you're pinching it between. It's just as though you're hitting it from both sides when you have a heavy enough anvil. And that's what does the work. So there's lots of ways to shape it, and then lots of hand tools to further refine what happens. Having done something that's so physical, you actually feel like you've been somewhere and done something. If the piece has come out well and you watched it taking the form you want, it's a satisfaction having created something that, you know, to my eye is beautiful. And the whole point in the long run to me is to make something that somebody else will think is beautiful. The technique never ends because I was real lucky. I came along at just the right time. I'm now at the point where I feel like I can really slow down and do the things I want to do. So that's encouraging. But we may stub our toe, we may make mistakes, but just keep going. Fail forward. To learn more about Jack's creative process or to see examples of his latest work, visit his website, jackbrubaker.com. On our search for stories across the state, we've shared many unbelievable moments, not just with the new friends we've met, but also with each other. So as we prepare to say goodbye, we want to take a moment to acknowledge the hosts who have helped make this show what it is. Chuck Carney and Ann Shea, Pam Thrash and Joe Wren, and of course, my co-host, Daryl Neer. Thank you guys for going to great heights for the weekly special. Meet Bob Doherty. He's the owner of the place. Skydive Greensburg, and you guessed it, Greensburg, Indiana. His passion for skydiving began on July 21st, 1969, the day Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. Uh, truthfully, I was on my way back from the Led Zeppelin concert down in Houston, and we saw parachutes coming down. And we decided, you know, hey dude, let's go skydiving. For Doug Daniel, it was a slightly less impetuous decision. So this is my 50th birthday present for my kids, so I have wanted to do it for 30 years and here I am. These days, everyone is going skydiving. It's doctors, lawyers, it's students, it's retired grandmothers. I mean, there's, there's no rhyme or reason to it. it it's, there's such a mix now. Some people are here for a dare. Some people don't even think it through until they get here and realize what they just committed themselves to. Some people come here with no intentions of jumping. They want to be the official photographer and stay on the ground, then they end up going and jumping too after they see it. My decision to skydive actually came after hearing so many people say, there's absolutely no way to describe it except to do it. It's not a roller coaster ride. There's no sensation of falling, if that's what you mean. But as soon as you leave the plane within three or four seconds, uh, you're going to go, this is pretty cool. We'll see. First, though, there's some training. All newbies have to do a tandem jump, meaning there's an instructor attached to you. Jumpers watch the instructional video and learn the three basic things they need to know for the tandem jump how to exit the airplane, the free fall position, and the landing. And we go on the assumption that you're not going to get any of them right. The instructors are prepared for that. Then it's off to get into your flight suit and harnessed up. Step in neutral. Originally, everybody was jumping military surplus equipment and the safety mechanism that was built in, they just weren't very good. Uh, the odds were against you. Uh, and once those were perfected to eliminate those types of potential problems, uh, then, uh, then it changed everything. Thankfully, as I am off to the airplane. There are three tandem teams, including myself, plus aerial photographers who jump alongside the teams. It's a nerve wracking flight, almost surreal, with many of us actually asking ourselves, are we really doing this? When the doors open, the photographer goes out first. Then it's my turn. 
At 8,000 feet, the air is freezing. There's no sense of falling. It almost feels like floating. 60 seconds does feel like a long time, but after a little bit, you loosen up. After the minute free fall, the parachute goes up with a jerk. An easy five minute trip to Earth. My photographer Miko had to get down sooner though, screeching in at a high rate of speed. <laughs> All I had to do was lift my legs and then softly touch down. And my reaction? Amazing. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, it was great. While Skydive Greensburg has since closed, Skydive Indianapolis is in full swing. See Indiana like never before. Learn more at skydiveindianapolis.com. Man, kudos to former uh, weekly special host Ann Shea for doing that. I told them I would not do that. I put it in my contract specifically, no skydiving. No, just kidding. <laughs> well, one of my favorite parts of the weekly special has been the music and we could not pass up the opportunity to introduce you to one more amazing talent right here in Indiana. Meet Gordon Bonham. When I was a kid, I read an interview with Eric Clapton and he talked about all these blues guys, Freddie King, BB King, Buddy Guy, Albert Collins. So I started listening to those guys, and that's really where I took that left turn and fell in love with the blues. I was originally drawn to blues because of the improvisational qualities of it. As a guitarist, blues is this great format to express yourself. But then the more I got into it, the more I started listening to the lyrics and what the music's really all about. Blues was a lot like the early version of rap people talking about things in their life and what's important to them, their ups and their downs. It's just a great form of entertainment and expression and just kind of social commentary. It's not just a music, it's really a statement when you're playing the blues. What caused me to really go for it and take on music as my career is once you've performed and you get the bug, you just have to do it. It's the greatest thing. It's almost as much of an experience and a joy for me as the audience. I mean, I love performing and hopefully they love hearing me. The sound of my music is a combination of several different types of blues. I love the Chicago blues, which is a blend of electrified country blues from down in Mississippi. But I also like the West Coast sound, which is kind of swinging, big band. And I love B.B. King. Who doesn't love B.B. King? So I'm kind of a mixture of everything. When I'm playing, it's almost like I want the audience to enjoy the music as much as I do. We used to joke that people come out and see us just because they love to watch us have so much fun. When they see me enjoying what I'm doing so much, they pick up on that. Because a lot of people don't know what they like. That's kind of my goal. Play them this music and have them enjoy it as much as I do. I think it's important for blues to be heard. I think it's our job to keep the music alive. Blues is perhaps one of the first real American musics. Blues and jazz, and they kind of evolved at the same time. And I think blues is an art form, more than just music. And I'm proud to feel like I helped push that along. I keep plugging away at it because I just love to learn more, and every day I want to be better at what I do. And I find a lot of joy in playing music. It's good for the way I feel, and I just think it makes a great life a life of music. And now welcome blues guitarist Gordon Bonham. Local honey, never tasted anything so sweet. Local honey, Never tasted anything so sweet I've been all around the world Found it right here on my street Always had a sweet tooth So tired of being let down Always had a sweet tooth 
Yeah, I'm tired of being let down And I found my local honey Sweetest thing in town Local honey Yeah, make it feel all right Local honey I'll make you feel all right Yeah, gonna take away your itch Keep you home at night Hand me down my spoon Open up your honey jar Hand me down my spoon And I found my local honey Ain't this the sweetest honeymoon so sweet Loco honey Never tasted anything so sweet I've been all around the world Found it right here on my street To hear more of Gordon's music or to get a complete list of upcoming shows, visit his website, gordonbonham.com. Well, that's all the time that we have, and that concludes the weekly special. Thank you so much for your support throughout the years, and don't forget, the weekly special is continuing in spirit with WTIU's new program, Journey Indiana. It premieres Thursday, September 6th, right here on WTIU. You'll find the same stories you've come to expect from the weekly special, from hidden Hoosier gems to breathtaking artists, unbelievable history, and everything in between. You definitely do not want to miss it. And I want to say personally that it has been a total joy exploring Indiana with you. Like so many of you guys, I've lived in Indiana almost my entire life. And just when you think that you know everything there is to know about a place, there are shows like the weekly special and now Journey Indiana, to prove that there are still so many surprises. So thank you so much for watching with us. And one more time before we go, before we really, really go, Gordon Bonham, good night.
soon in the morning about the break of day that's when you plan make your getaway soon in the morning baby can we try it one more time I love you, girl, you know it's true, I never mean to mistreat you, soon in the morning, can we try it one more time? Breaks my heart when you push me Production away. support for the weekly special is provided by IU School of Public Health Bloomington, addressing public health needs by preventing disease, promoting health, and improving quality of life across the state and around the world through research, teaching, and community engagement. Smithville Fiber, the Giga City Company, Fiber Internet, HD, and digital IPTV in Southern Indiana. More information at smithville.com. The Alcobine Recognition Endowment Fund, established by friends and family of Alcobine to support jazz initiatives on WTIU and WFIU. And WTIU members, thank you 